I think we're in reasonable shape, actually, given the circumstances. I, I think when you look at the losses last year, they're clearly uh, unacceptable. Uh, however, if it wasn't for the uh, decisive action that we took dur uh, during the year, I think those losses would have been significantly greater. So when you consider that our revenue fell by a billion pounds, uh, just over 11%, we were able to offset that fall in revenue by reducing our cost base by almost exactly the same figure. And had we not done that, there's no question these losses would have been uh, much, much greater than we reported today. You call them unacceptable losses. Mm -hmm. Can you afford then to continue this dispute with the unions? Well, I think the question is, can we afford not to? Because what we've got to do at British Airways, and as we have demonstrated, is that this is a business that needs permanent structural change. Our cost base is out of line with our competitors. Our cost base is far too high for the market conditions that we have seen. And we've gone through a period, of not just of cyclical downturn, but structural change. So we've got to change if we've to have a long-term viable future. But the unions are saying that the original areas of the dispute have now been resolved and the sticking points are areas like travel perks. If that's the case, isn't that quite a petty issue to get bogged down and to stop you reaching resolution? Well, the important point is if that's the case, and that is not the case. Uh, when you hear Tony Woodley or Derek Simpson talk, uh, they will tell you, and I would agree with them, that between us we have reached uh, agreement on a proposal that addresses all of the substantive issues. However, when you listen to the trade union branch at the centre of this, BASA, they say something completely different. In fact, they have publicly trashed the agreement that we've reached with Tony Woodley and Derek Simpson. So this is much bigger than travel concessions. If that were the only issue, you know, we would not be sitting here talking about a dispute. However, it's not the only issue, and that's why I've been talking to Tony and talking to Derek to try and get them to take control of their union and to start delivering on the uh, commitments, delivering on the proposals that uh, we have agreed, and put this dispute, which is unjustified, put it to an end. Unjustified, you think, expensive, certainly, not just in day-to-day -day costs, but also in terms of reputation and brand. Why would anyone risk booking with British Airways at the moment? Well, why people are continuing to book with this because we've demonstrated very clearly that even in the face of this unjustified industrial action, British Airways will continue to fly. And what you've seen, I think clearer than ever before, is the true spirit that exists within British Airways, where tens of thousands of people have come together to ensure that British Airways can continue to fly. So while you have a trade union branch balloting for industrial action with significant support, they're not getting support on the ground. The vast majority of cabin crew have voted with their feet and have come to work. And the vast majority, if not all of the other people around the business, have stood up and said, we're not accepting this. We do not agree with it. We're going to do whatever we can to keep BA flying. And that's very important. So we will continue to fly. We will operate a significant proportion of our schedule. And over time, we'll build that up to uh, be able to operate a full schedule, even if this union continues uh, to threaten us with industrial action. We've got a new era of politics in this country. The buzzwords are negotiation, compromise. Are you prepared to back down to do a deal? Well, I've compromised uh, you know, to reach agreement with Tony Woodley and Derek Simpson. Uh, that's evident in the proposal that we have negotiated. Uh, it's evident by the fact that Tony Woodley says that all of the issues that were of concern to him have been addressed. What we need to do now is get Tony Woodley and Derek Simpson to get the branch BASA to acknowledge that and accept that they need to change. And if you look back at the history of the 15 months of negotiation that we've been involved in, where British Airways has been at the table, you will see that the branch BASA has refused on many occasions to sit there and negotiate with us. That is unacceptable. You cannot run a business with that dysfunctional behaviour. You cannot run a business facing the challenges we face, having a trade union that is out of touch with reality. Unite has made some very personal attacks on you during the course of this dispute. How do you feel about that? Why do you think it's got so personal? Well, I think it helps them to try and deflect attention from what the real issue is. The real issue here is Unite, Tony Woodley, Derek Simpson, they do not have control of their trade union. The tail is wagging the dog. Tony Woodley's words, not mine. They've got to step in. They've got to put an end to that. They've got to show leadership within the trade union. I sat with Tony and Derek for two hours on Wednesday evening. You know, we acknowledged that in that room you had three people who could sign an agreement. The problem is in that room you had two people who could not deliver the agreement, Tony and Derek. 
That is the critical issue. We've got to move beyond this. But while they're dealing with those internal union issues, we're getting on with running the business. And we're getting tens of thousands of BA people, many of them Unite members, saying we will volunteer to keep BA flying. And that's what our customers are seeing. That's what this business needs to see. People pulling together to face a significant challenge in the way we have uh, done before. You're very passionate about this. Do you see it as a personal battle? No, not at all. Uh, no, my role as the, the CEO of British Airways is not personal at all. You know, I can sit down with anybody. I can shake hands with everybody. It's in no way personal with me. This is about business. And business... Uh, you know, and the business issues are very clear from the figures that we release today. The other big industrial dispute over the past year has been at Royal Mail, and a lot of people have said that got resolved as soon as the boss, Adam Crozier, left. Do you think the same could be the case with British Airways? No, I, I think what you've got in British Airways is a boss who has finally stood up to the need for change and addressed and tackled issues that should have been tackled years and years ago. I think anybody who is close to this, anybody who examines what's going on, will recognize that we've got working practices and costs that are completely out of line with the industry, completely out of line with our competitors. And what we're doing in British Airways is tackling that with determination. Because without that determination, this is a business that would not have a viable future. And I, I think the evidence of that is the fact that we were able to take out of our cost base one billion pounds working with our people. You know, the figures that you see today are a contribution that everybody in British Airways has made. And that's what this business does well. You know, we can face up to any competition. What we can't deal with is a trade union that wants to destroy British Airways. And if they want to continue to do that, we've got to continue to develop contingency plans that makes their activities, makes their actions irrelevant. And that's exactly what we will be doing. Some people have said that you have a broader agenda. You want to keep the unions in line. You want to break the union. Is that what you're trying to do? Well, you know, if that were true, I don't think Tony would have invited me into his office to spend two hours, you know, drinking coffee and talking to him. I don't think Tony would invite me out to dinner, you know, to sit down and eat food with him. You know, I'm not a person who has a vendetta or a, an agenda against trade unionism. In fact, you know, I fully respect and recognise the value of trade unions. But what trade unions need to do, and what this branch at the heart of this, Bassett, needs to do, is recognise that this is a business that needs change. All other branches, you know, unite themselves as a trade union has recognised that. And, and to be fair to the people in British Airways, many of them have made significant sacrifices. Many of them have changed the way they work in an effort to keep BA uh, in business, but more importantly, to ensure that BA has a cost base that is competitive going forward. We want to grow this business. We want to see BA expand again. But we can only do that if we've got work practices and costs that enable us to do so profitably. Do you regret taking Unite to the High Court? The injunction was overturned and you're left with the same problems but an even more angry union. No, I, I don't think they're angry. I, I think they recognise that uh, we will look at every option available to us to try and protect our customers. And no, I, I don't regret going to the High Court. Uh, I think that's democracy in action. I know some people said it was an affront to democracy. Uh, but clearly, uh, we had uh, sufficient evidence to get a High Court judge to grant us an injunction. Uh, and I fully respect the Court of Appeal decision, but it was a split decision, two to one. Uh, so we will do anything we can to try and keep BEA flying in the interests of our customers. Unite say they won't strike again before Monday. Mm -hmm. Can you do a deal by then? I hope so. Um, you know, we've said all along that we're capable of doing a deal. Uh, I spoke to Tony Woodley last night on the phone. I'll speak to him again today and hopefully we'll have an opportunity to meet over the weekend. ACAS have offered their services and uh, I've no doubt that we will be meeting and hopefully meeting uh, with the assistance of ACAS over the weekend.